Hello from Vancouver. Welcome everybody to our Master of Data Science webinar. Today we're going to be talking about the student experience. My name is Tiffany Timbers. I'm an instructor here in the Department of Statistics at UBC and I work um, primarily with the Master of Data Science program. I teach in the program and I develop curriculum for it. So this webinar is going to run from 9.30 a.m. until 11 a.m. this morning. And I'm going to start off with some housekeeping, um, just to get us oriented with how this is going to work. So this is a, your opportunity to ask questions from two MDS alumni and a current student. And I will introduce our panel shortly. The questions, as I mentioned earlier, are going to be focused about the student experience. So we're going to talk about things from their experience in the program to tips they might have for new incoming Master of Data Science students and what they did after graduation in the case of our alumni. We will have another uh, webinar coming up to talk about um, application procedures, prerequisites, and more technical aspects of the Master of Data Science program, and that is going to happen on February 27th. So keep uh, paying attention to our Facebook page, um, and we'll send notification or announcement there of uh, more details for that. Um, so for today's webinar, uh, many of you registered before um, we started this morning and have already submitted questions. We're going to start with those questions. Um, but if you have additional questions you uh, would like to ask, please feel free to put them in the comment box. And if we have time, we will uh, get to those after the questions that were posted earlier. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is introduce a little bit about the Master of Data Science program at UBC. Then we'll talk about the capstone project, and then I will um, introduce you to our panel. So the professional Masters of Data Science program here at UBC is a 10-month program. And you spend the first eight months working in intensive coursework, um, doing 24 one-credit courses. These courses each have a lecture and a hands-on lab component. And the content of the courses, a third of them are from statistics, a third of them are from computer science, and then about a third of them are data science um, specific. At the end of these eight months, then you take what you learned in those courses and apply it to a real-world problem in the capstone project. Um, this program is very intensive and fast-paced. It will keep you busy, and so uh, engaging in this program is really a full-time commitment. And the prerequisites, again, we'll talk about this later on February 27th, but just in brief, me, um, are that you need an undergraduate course in statistics, an undergraduate course in computer programming, and an undergraduate cor course in either calculus or linear algebra, but we recommend that you do have both. So a little bit more about the capstone project. Um, first, is that uh, students are not doing these individually. We're going to set you up in teams to do this um, so that you can build on strength of each other. And you're going to work on a real world problem from one of our partners. Um, and our partners come from various uh, segments. So we have industry partners, government partners, not-for-profit partners, as well as academic partners. And some examples of current and past partners include Microsoft, Unbounce, VC Statistics, the UBC um, Solder School of Business, and FIN, which is a financial tech startup company. Okay, so now we're going to move on uh, to our panel. So I'm going to start on the far side over here, and we'll work our way back to me. So um, this is Chris <coughs> and Oliver. So I'm going to get each of you. Uh, should I pause? Just one moment for technical difficulties. Oh, I'm good. Okay, I'm going to continue. Looks like the technical difficulties have been solved. Excellent. Um, so I'm going to start at the far end, and I'm going to ask um, Chris and Oliver to tell us a little bit of your background before you entered the program, and then a little bit about what you're doing now. Sure. Uh, right, so my name is Chris. I'm currently working as a data scientist for a company called T4G. They're a consulting company, Canadian consulting company. Um, my background before the data science program, um, yeah, I was sort of in the middle of a career change going from classical pianist and piano teacher. Uh, I think it's pretty rare uh, career <laughs> change. Um, but I had spent a couple of years doing coursework looking at possibly statistics or actuarial science. And so uh, in two years, I'd, I'd gained some experience in computer science and statistics and calculus. And so when this program came up, um, it looked really interesting. And I applied and really glad I did it. Yeah. And uh, Oliver? 
Sure. So uh, I'm Oli. Uh, before doing the course, I was a mechanical engineer. So I did a, a master's in mechanical engineering back in the UK and spent a year working in the automotive industry. Uh, yeah, and the best decision I I made really was to was to do the course and make the move sideways into data science. So. Um, yeah, following the course, I'm now working for Finn AI, which is a financial tech startup. So I'm working on the data science team building supervised learning systems for natural language processing. Great. Thank you. And then we'll move over to Jordan, um, one of our current students. Um, Jordan, can you tell us a little bit about your background and where you are in the program now? Okay, so I did my undergrad, sorry, I'm Jordan. I did my undergrad in biology, but I actually worked as a preschool teacher and just in a coffee shop and did this stuff kind of on the side. But at this point in the program, we've covered a lot, actually. The basics of supervised learning. Right now, we're in unsupervised learning. We're looking at model and feature selection, and we're at doing some uh, basic regression and statistics. It's all really interesting stuff that's really overlapping and very cohesive. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. OK, so now we're going to jump to some of the questions that were um, submitted to us before we started the webinar this morning. And um, I'm going to invite the panel to just jump in and answer um, the ones that you can. If somebody has answered a question but you feel like you can um, add something or you would like to add something, please go ahead. Um, and again, uh, some of these might apply for the current student, apply to the current students more or the alumni. So the first question that was asked um, was why you were interested in data science. And I think this is something you all can answer. So why don't we all take a turn answering that? <coughs> sure. Um, <coughs> Like I said, I was in the middle of a career change, so I was actually looking at actuarial science. Um, I really like statistics and math, uh, solving puzzles, and so I decided I was going to go into something related to this. Um, and it was kind of by fluke. My a neighbor um, told me that this program was starting up, and I had, I think, a week and a half to apply for it. And, um, and so I, I looked into it for about a week, and then I applied, and, um, and I'm, really, I'm really glad I did. It's been fantastic. Great. Yeah. Ollie? Yeah, I think very, very similar answer through, throughout university and through engineering, mathematics was my strong point. Um, but I think the impact you can have as a single engineer is, is a lot less than you can have as a single data scientist. Mm -hmm. So that's what excited me about data science was to go in and, and build software that, that drives a big impact in a company sort of almost on your own. Yeah. Excellent. Jordan? Yeah, so my undergrad in biology, I liked statistics, but I didn't know what part of biology I actually really enjoyed. And then in my last term, I took a computer science course, and I didn't realize you could put the two together and actually do something with it. And then, <laughs> uh, like you, a friend of mine sent me the link to this, because I did my undergrad at UBC, so I was like, it's like coming home. <laughs> so. <laughs> awesome, thank you. OK. Um, this is actually another question I think that you all could answer. So the next question is, are there any subjects um, uh, content um, specifically from the uh, math, computer science um, that you would have liked to have more experience with before you started MDS? Um, personally, um, like I said, I was, I was actually looking at possibly taking my first actuarial exam, so I was reviewing pretty hard statistics um, the summer I applied. Um, and even before I knew that I got in, I was still looking at that. So I think that helped me a lot. I feel like the statistics and probability would be something that mm. uh, lots of people, lots of my colleagues, uh, fellow students, would probably say that uh, would be useful. Um, but I, I felt pretty good. Good. Yeah. yeah. I think having a, a solid foundation in um, things like matrix multiplication and, and linear algebra okay. is not a prerequisite. Like it was definitely possible to pick it up as we went through the course but if you came in with that you would some things would be a lot easier um, throughout the process yeah great thank you yes and also I found two people who at least had some of a computer lo program language they could translate it to learning Python and R whereas if they didn't have any of that they it's not that they couldn't do it it just made it a bit more of a challenge mm -hmm. so definitely having some sort of programming language on top of definitely the linear algebra Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the message is <laughs> yeah, be familiar with yeah. stats, linear algebra, and a, and a programming language yeah. before yeah. you start in September. Uh, <laughs> it was definitely possible. I mean, my, my programming experience coming in was next to nothing. So, you know, it's, it is possible to pick it up. Oh, totally. Totally. I'm not saying that. <laughs> it just but to set yourself easy. up for yeah. success. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay. Um, okay. 
what if an applicant does not have any prior experience in data science? Maybe Chris could answer this yeah. best. Um, I'm pretty sure coming in, I, I didn't even realize, like I don't think I knew what supervised and unsupervised learning even meant when I, showed, when I saw them on my, my uh, timesheet, uh, my schedule. So I think that's fine. I mean, if you've got the background and you're, you're interested in the field, I, I don't th think it's a problem at all. Great. Do either of you have anything to add or no? No, agree. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then, what if an applicant has a lot of prior data science experience or education? Do you think, what do you think they will find or feel with the program? Any advice? I found it's, it's incredibly broad. So I'm constantly, because I work at a startup, I can constantly see different places where I can apply it. Um, so if you've already got a lot of experience in one specific area, you're still going to broaden your, your scope. Um, but for me, it was really useful to start broad and then find the parts of data science that I find really interesting and mm -hmm. specialize in those. So that seemed like the logical sort of process to do it in. But if you're already in data science and you, you already are doing what you enjoy, I think there's a lot of self-teaching you can do anyway to, to pick up on what you're doing. And certainly on the job, you need to be, you know, the field is progressing so fast that you need to be keeping up with it anyway. So um, yeah, it'll, it'll broaden your scope a lot. Great. Yeah. Thank you. OK. So uh, maybe I'll save this one for the alumni. Um, so working as data scientists now, what skills do you think are most important to have? And what subject areas of study um, are an asset when you are looking for a job? So which of the courses maybe helped you out the most in your job search? Um, that's kind of a hard one to say, I think. Um, uh, in general, I think it was just a lot of skills that we learned in the program. So being able to put on my resume that I've got R and Python and SQL and uh, machine learning algorithms, right? There's, <clears throat> I think it's the combination of things that made me successful in getting a job. I don't know if it was any one in particular, uh, personally. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. You, you come out with a, a very broad range of, of skills. Mm -hmm. So um, certainly when I was looking for work, I think that is appealing to small companies that you know, you interview as a data scientist, and they're not even sure what they're going to have you doing yet. And then, you know, sort of six months down the line, you end up in a very specialized area. But it's because, you know, I, I, the company that I work for now, I came in and just sort of identified things like we need a database, we need to be doing deep learning for these uh, problems, and sort of learning that on the job myself. But um, yeah, I think the, the broad range of skills, again, is like what is really attractive to companies. Great. Yeah. OK. Um, you probably all can weigh in on this one, um, although maybe yours hasn't happened yet. But you can weigh on what it has been so far. So uh, what was your favorite or best experience in the program? Um, <clears throat> I was thinking about that question. Um, um, <clears throat> I mean, I, like, I, I liked a lot about the program. Uh, so <laughs> it's hard to say. I mean, it was, at the same time, it was tough. <sighs> but. Um, I guess one thing that I really appreciate about the program is the fact that I was changing careers, but I also feel like not only do I have this new career path, but I've got a network now of 20 other data scientists um, that, you know, we just went out for, 10 of us went out for drinks the other night together and we're all catching up and, you know, we kind of stay in contact. So, um, yeah, I, I appreciate that part of the program for sure. Um, favorite material? I guess probably supervised machine learning was what that was what sparked my interest and um, what I've gone into since then okay. yeah, that's what I really enjoyed great Jordan? might be a bit of a tangent but education as far as the education goes having the support of because we have a very dedicated team of instructors mm -hmm. and having that support along with the environment of your fellow students who have all such different backgrounds mm -hmm. I think is my favorite thing of the program because you're learning so much not only from your instructors and your TAs but also the people around you because they have different specialized skills yeah. and that to me is huge great and it's also just incredibly applied which I loved there was yeah. no like everything you're doing there is a reason and you can use it mm -hmm. and that was really nice coming from a sort of traditional master's program um, into something that was just like very punchy in terms of the delivery of information great yeah. OK. Uh, the next question is more about uh, while you're in the program. So um, maybe you can comment on how you interact with others in the program so we can talk about perhaps students,
TAs, um, the lab instructors, and then the, the lecture instructors? Um, I think in general the, the lecture instructors were available. Uh, we had some great TAs and great teaching fellows. Um, I can't really complain about any of that, actually. It, it was a really great experience from that, in that respect. Um, <clears throat> And the instructors always wanted to hear our feedback as well. So they were re very receptive to um, how are we handling the material? Is there anything that, they, that is unclear that needs to be covered again? Um, even like teaching styles, like I think they were very receptive to just about any feedback we had. Um, and then like we touched on before, within the class, um, our dynamic, I think, in our class was really great. And um, we were able to learn from each other. I think all that was really positive. Great. And even as an example, like last night, I was having a hard time with something about missing values in a data set. And I, uh, we have Slack. So I contacted one of our instructors. And he got, I, it was like 10 PM. And he got back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they're always, I don't know if that's yeah. a good thing or not. Yeah. I don't know. But it was, it was really nice in the time, because you're not sitting there frustrated for mm -hmm. ages. I mean, yeah. I shouldn't say that like it happens all the time. But it was a big deal at the time. Yeah. Well, fantastic. OK. So maybe I'll direct this one at you, Oliver. Uh, and maybe you've touched on this a little bit, but you can go into a bit more deep uh, detail. But what is the most useful knowledge that you learn in the MDS, and how are you taking that to the job? Sure. Um, so there are lots of different, I mean, the, the area would be supervised learning, and there are sort of lots of different pieces that you pick up in the course and you maybe I couldn't recite them on the spot, but I knew they existed, and mm -hmm. that was really important going into uh, where I work now. Um, so I'm currently building a classifier for natural language processing. So we have sentences come in from users, and we need to classify those into 50 different categories. And I immediately had a good idea, like an idea of how you might do that from, from the course. And uh, implemented that at work and we've been iterating, iterating over that since. So that's evolved from sort of a very simple bag of words approach to something that is now a deep learning model that uses recurrent and convolutional layers and things like that. And that's, that's all information I've learned on the job. But things that have been really valuable there have been like understanding the metrics for a classifier, um, things like precision and recall as opposed to accuracy. And all of these small decisions that are actually make a big difference in a, in a company like ours where we, we measure our performance and report that to our customers. So we need to report um, sensible metrics about our models to them. We need our models to be as accurate as they can possibly be and things like that. So we're, we now read research papers and implement the things that are state of the art, which I could not have done coming out of the course. But you've you've got all of the knowledge to be able to open those doors and sort of proceed in that direction. So um, yeah, for me, it's, it's almost entirely supervised learning has been what I've, what I've used from this course in my current work. But I think that's because our, our company specialize in, in one thing. Great. Yeah. Um, Chris, do you have a different experience? Um, uh, not really. I mean, I'm in a consulting field, so I've just been working on one project right now. Um, and uh, I'm not running deep neural nets at the moment, but you know, creating a dashboard and um, running um, classification models. And, um, and I just feel like I've had such a good grounding, though, that I'm ready for like, the next project, mm -hmm. whether that's going to be <laughs> working with R or Python or you know, um, whatever technology I need. I feel like I just have a good, solid foundation now, so I'm ready to keep learning on the job and, and uh, pick up new things. Great. Okay, um, so again, maybe this can more speak to the alumni, um, but if there's anything that you wanted to add, because curriculum, we do try and keep it updated and, and update it from year to year. So um, what tools and technologies did you learn in the program? So, uh, oh, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a go. Uh, Git is, um, yeah, so Git, GitHub, Python, R, those, those are kind of the big ones, and then I guess everything, and then AWS as well, and then everything kind of sat underneath that, so that, you know, all of, the all of the libraries that you would imagine there, things like ggplot, which I think is great for visualization. Um, 
Yeah, maybe just rattle some yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sequel. Yep. We did yeah. a whole no sequel as well. Um, yeah, those are the big ones, though, for sure. Anything else that you wanted to add, Jordan? Not yet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, okay. Uh, this will be towards the alumni. Um, what kind of enterprise level, oh no, this would be for everybody, sorry. Not, we don't ask about the enterprise data you're working with now. <laughs> what kind of data did you work with um, in the program? So in the capstone project, um, working with that data, that was, that was great. Um, Maybe you, you could remind, uh, let the audience know who your sure. partner was and just a little tiny bit about the data. Yeah. Sure. So um, for my capstone project, I work with Rio Tinto. Uh, it's a mining company, and so we were given uh, drill results, basically. Um, and so we were taking a look at trying to identify um, early stage projects that most resembled later stage projects that were successful, basically. Um, and so that was really helpful to get our hands on data like that, not just because the data set was complex, but uh, because it's a real world application where you have to really start to understand what the data means and you can't rely on your assumptions about what you think that column is. is. But, uh, um, and I'm, I'm realizing that as well with, in my job, right? Like you have to look at the data set, but sometimes um, you just have to get used to having to really gain knowledge of that data set. So there was that, and then we worked with the MNIST, uh, MNIST um, handwritten numbers data set. It was, they definitely switched the data sets up through the course in the content as well. So um, that was something I really liked. You're not just constantly doing you know, this different theory on the same data set, That's which right. is interesting. Yeah. Um, Titanic data set. All those open source <laughs> ones. Um, yeah. yeah, and then for, for my capstone, I worked with Coast Mountain Bus Company. So um, we had as much data as we wanted to ask for. <laughs> so we, we end up with 100 gigabytes. I think they had well over a terabyte of data that we wow. could have had from them. And we had nine weeks to produce something. So <laughs> we, uh, we scaled that back. Uh, but um, that was a, so this is a bus company. And that was uh, trip times for buses between two points uh, spanning back five years for the whole of the greater Vancouver area. Um, and we were trying to predict the run times of those buses so that we could help them schedule uh, more accurately in the future. Great. Yeah. yeah, I think right now we're just starting to get into like stepping away from like Titanic and the IRS data set. And we're right now doing, um, for the Unsupervised Learning Lab this week, it's a eight gigabyte sparse matrix for Amazon ratings, which is really cool because it's, you're really starting to get into actual features and user stuff. And so that's been really interesting. Great. So we're getting our feet wet. Obviously we haven't hit the capstone point yet, but I'm excited for that. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess the next question that I'm going to ask is maybe if we can talk a little bit less about the technical aspects, uh, maybe a bit more about experience. So maybe you could all, because you all have different experiences, even though you were in the same year, um, comment on the atmosphere of the program. Uh, the atmosphere of the program. Yeah, and how you found that and how that worked with you as an individual. Um, uh, I guess I touched on it before. I felt like, you know, there's a lot of feedback. There's a lot of interaction within the class. It was great. Um, so there's a lot of support, I felt. Um, but it is intense. Mm. So the atmosphere is definitely, <laughs> it's definitely intense. Uh, but it's kind of like a we're all in this together kind yeah. of intense <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah. Like it's very supportive in that respect. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was tough. It was a tough program. But oh, at yeah. the same time, yeah. But, but it's, it's so, it, like that kind of challenge is just so yeah. fun. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, it was, a, it was a great challenge. And, you know, um, <laughs> it's like I, I would do it again if I could go back in time, but don't know if I necessarily want to do that kind <laughs> of thing <experiment laughs> again. I don't need that at the moment, but, uh, but, but I came away with a lot of skills. So, you know, it was a, it was a great experience. Yeah. yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of maturity in the, in the cohort, mm -hmm. I found. Um, People are there because they've spent the money and they want to be. Uh, they're making a decision. They're not, it's not like, you know, often I, I found in uh, undergrad there are people who are there because they just thought they should do a degree. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, yeah, everyone was there because they thought about it and made the decision. Um, some people have quit jobs to be there, etc. So that was really good. And then there was a, I think we all found it really interesting. So we, you know, we would often talk about it outside of 
outside of class, mm -hmm. um, which was great as well. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and then after you talk about it, you go down a rabbit hole of something you're interested <laughs> in. Like, I've never heard the term rabbit hole so much as being in this program. <laughs> you just go off on a tangent. But yeah, everyone's super supportive, like I've said about six times now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay. This, I think, goes along a similar theme. Um, I guess a less technical, as less about the technical aspects of the program, more about yeah atmosphere and how you felt about it. So let's talk now about the length of the program. So Chris, you mentioned that it's intense. <coughs> yep. It's ten months. What did you like about it being ten months, and what did you dislike about it being ten months? Um, yeah, I, th I think that was a bit of a conversation that we were having because we were the first cohort and we we're deciding. You know, we we want to try to provide feedback, you know, and so um, I liked that it was ten months personally. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, it was it was a tough ten months, uh, especially the eight months of coursework. Um, but I, yeah, I I I like the length of it personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because the field is changing so much right now. Mm, like stepping right. away from work for more than ten months, you don't know what's going to have changed from when you started to when you finished. Yeah. Yeah. Any negative thoughts about the ten months or or? things that you found challenging? It's not the kind of program where it's like you can have a part-time job outside. Like mm -hmm. you're definitely intense and focused on it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to spend a lot of time with your cohort. Mm -hmm. But that to me is worth it. Mm -hmm. But it just depends if you're a big person who likes to travel a lot or something. You might not have time for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's definitely possible to have a weekend, but you have to be ruthless with your time management. Um, I personally wasn't. Look, I didn't want to go back to university. Uh, I didn't like the idea of a two-year course either. I just mm -hmm. wanted to get it done and get into industry. So mm -hmm. for me, spot on. Um, but if that's not what you're looking for, then yeah, you've, you've got to know you want it before you go in. I think. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Um, and then, was ten months enough? <coughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at that pace, it's definitely enough. You don't need more than 10 months at that pace. But um, yeah, it's funny. I think when I graduated, I felt like, OK, um, I just changed careers. I barely had any data science on my resume. Um, and I thought, OK, this might be kind of tough to get a job. Um, and, and I sort of wondered, did I really have the skill set from this program to do it? <coughs> but now that I'm, I've got a job, and I've been working at it, and like everything's going well, I'm like, okay, no, this, this did give me the solid foundation that I need. Mm -hmm. And like Oliver was saying, there's still so much to learn because mm -hmm. it's such a, um, it's such a developing field that um, even if it was two years, you know, you still wouldn't know everything and you'd still be learning constantly. So I feel like it's enough to get a job mm -hmm. and to feel comfortable in that job. And then you'll just keep learning on the job. Yeah. Yeah. That too, and the pace that you're learning at, I'm, kind of anticipating that that'll be a benefit when we're actually working because right. you're going to have to be picking up stuff quick and we'll have <coughs> a lot of experience in that. Mm -hmm. Eight months worth, for sure. Right. That's true. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Um, maybe I'll start with Ollie on this one. What would you tell your 10-month younger self <laughs> <laughs> to watch out for and to prepare for this program? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> So what would I tell myself before starting the course? Yeah, yeah, if you could I give some advice. I think I, I kind of told myself those things before I started it anyway. Yeah. Uh, but it was more like, you know, it's, for me it wasn't about grades. It was, what do you find interesting? Um, what do you want to focus on? This is an incredibly broad field, and there were, there were areas of it naturally that interested me more than others, and that's what I, I put the time into. And, but for me it was a focus on understanding. Like, mm -hmm. do I understand this? Okay, move on. Um, to try and get through the content. Um, so yeah, I think that that was really helpful in carrying me through. Great. Yeah. Any advice that you two would give yourself? Make time for balance, like exercise, mm. that kind of stuff, because it's so easy to sit there for 12 hours and go, oh, I need to do this, and I'm going to do that, and then you go getting down that rabbit hole that I told you about, and you're like, oh, wait, I've been sitting in the same position. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Balance, yes. Yeah, I don't know. I was expecting it to be intense. Yeah. So I was sort of like Prepare. preparing myself for it. Uh, and it was. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. 
All right, so we've reached the end of our pre-registered questions. So I'm going to uh, lean over to, um, uh, to the web now and take a look at some of the questions that are rolling in off the Facebook page live. So the first one um, is, how good is the data science field explored in Canada? Um, so perhaps maybe we can just comment on, how, how are you finding the data science field in Canada? Um, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure if I've been in industry long enough to really get a sense of that in mm -hmm. Canada. Um, but, I mean, everybody in our, I think everybody in our class has a job now, right? Um, I've heard of, um, I know my company is getting more interested in, in expanding their data science program. Um, I was talking to another one of our alumni yesterday who's working at a company and they're looking at expanding. So I think it's growing. I think it's still definitely growing. That's my sense. Any perspective, Ollie? Uh, no, I, I, I just uh, agree with that, really. I, I do get the sense that the demand for data scientists is growing faster than the course can pump them out. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess that's, that's a great thing. Uh, Google's opening an office in Vancouver, I think, mm -hmm. um, soon. And there's, there's obviously Microsoft here as well. Amazon. Uh, Amazon, yeah. So they'll hire a large number of data scientists there. And then there's it's a bit of a tech hub as well, particularly in Vancouver, I think because it's cheaper to start a company here than in the States. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of small companies, yeah. Great, okay. Um, so, uh, maybe I'll bump or uh, jump back to Ollie. How did you find your job? Uh, my after, current job? Yeah, your current job after you left the program. I, yeah, I, I loved it. I was in, came into a team of, uh, a very small team of data scientists in a company that was 17 people and we've mm -hmm. since, tripled in size in the last six months, okay. which has been completely nuts. <laughs> but it's been so fun to watch it watch it grow at that speed. Um, so did you apply for that position? Were they... Or oh, how did you find yeah, it? How did Sorry, you find it? Yeah. How do you find your no, job? No, no, how did uh, you find yours? I was on AngelList, I okay. think, looking at startups on there, and I saw, saw this company and shot a message over LinkedIn to the CEO. So I'd love to grab a coffee and chat about what, what you do. Mm -hmm. um, and he bumped me onto the VP of data science and I was interviewed a day later and then hired a day after that. Oh, wow. With <laughs> such as the speed of a, a company like that. But wow. Yeah. Great. Chris, what was your experience like? Um, yeah, I was applying for jobs uh, in a few different places, actually, not just focusing on Vancouver. So, um, and then I, um, I made it pretty far in a job interview process with Microsoft. Um, but then I didn't get that job, but then they recommended me to one of their partners, T4G. Okay. And um, yeah, I still have, actually haven't even met my boss face to face. He's in Toronto, so he hired me over the f after a couple phone interviews. Okay. And um, yeah, that's how I found out. Great. I think the, the capstone is also really good for that. I, mm -hmm. I mm. did get a, a job offer from the company we did the capstone project with, and those relationships are only going to grow as the course grows. So. Perfect. Yeah. Um, maybe you could each comment a little bit more about the capstone. Um, okay. What specifically would be interesting to hear would be um, how did your team work together and how did you split up the work? I think that would be an interesting to comment on. Okay. Yeah. Um, so like I said, I worked with Rio Tinto, a mining company. There was four of us on the team. And um, so we were looking at a few different things. So I said I, part of the modeling that we did was we were looking at um, identifying early stage projects. Um, there was a couple other modeling things that we were doing and then we were really trying to create a dashboard to visualize some of their data that um, they hadn't really visualized that way before. And so it, in our project it kind of naturally split up. So for, we started with the visualization and there was just so many different things to visualize that we each took apart. Um, and then there was also different things that we needed to model. So um, we each took uh, a bit of a role in different different components of that. Um, but we met um, four days a week for like six hours plus oh, every wow. day. Um, and so we had a lot of contact with each other. Um, and I, that, wor that worked really well. Great. Our team, I think, was really successful. And it was, yeah, it was great. Awesome. And how about your team, Ollie? It was, it was similar, yeah. It yep. sort of naturally split into a 
supervised learning problem and a visualization problem. Mm -hmm. So we, we split the team down the middle and it was, it was good because there were four of us and yeah. two people actually wanted to work on each of them, so we weren't okay. fighting over projects, which was great. And then we, we also made the decision to meet uh, four, four days a week in, in the morning, mm -hmm. um, uh, which I think, I don't think that that was critical to the success of our project. There were some groups that did it more of a sort of remote working mm -hmm. style and, and got a, a great deal done as well. So um, yeah, that's, that's how our team worked. Great. Next question is, okay, um, I think all three of you could probably comment on this. So what will be the depth of understanding of the machine learning algorithms that you learn? Anyone who would like to address that question? Well, the depth of understanding of the machine learning algorithms you learn. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. So in the program, you know, right. how, how deep into, how deep will your learning go into the, al the machine learning algorithms? Um, I think that they try to go pretty deep, actually. So it's not just a surface level, like, use this and then you get this outcome. Um, no, they, they do go pretty rigorously into the, the algorithms. Um, I think, yeah. Like yeah we, we did the first intense, iteration yeah. of an EM algorithm two weeks ago. Like, working through that, yeah. you definitely learn to understand. You, you get the back, the depth of it. You know what I mean? You understand what's going on behind mm -hmm. the scenes. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's not just, okay, run this and pretend to interpret it. Like, you actually know what's going on. No, which is really good, because even, you know, and it's important. It's important to know that as yeah. a data scientist going forward, right? So um, I just got back from a presentation uh, yesterday, and, um, you know, I'm ready to, like, talk about my models and defend my choices of why I did certain things, right? And that's important. You need that. Um, so, and, and I'll, be, I'll be having to explain the models to... <laughs> to other people next week, right? Like, and and we just it's it's important, and I think the program realizes that, and so we're they're making sure we realize that too. Yeah, I mean, we we went as far as things like you know the the depth was on the level of you know what is the equation for the entropy to split in a decision tree and things like that. So they, we we definitely went uh, deep enough to have a full understanding of these things, and I found that particularly uh, useful in in my work where we're. We're building neural networks where we need to be able to block the gradient in certain places, and so understanding things like backpropagation is, um, like, I wouldn't have understand why you block the gradient in a neural network if we hadn't gone that deep in the course. So yeah, super important. Great, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, this will be for the alumni, and please don't feel like you have to re release any personal information. <laughs> uh, you can maybe give a rough buffer on what data science salaries are like in the Vancouver area. <laughs> maybe from like not just commenting on yourself. I'm sure you've talked to your colleagues, and so you probably have some rough idea. Less if than in the bay. Less than <laughs> in the bay. Yeah, we can leave it at that. If, it, <laughs> if, if we that that could be perhaps a too personal question. Um, okay, let's go back to the student experience. Uh, let's talk about assessments in the program. So uh, maybe if somebody wanted to comment on and describe how students are assessed at the different levels, and then maybe um, how that helps or hinders learning uh, from your experiences. Well, each week you do a lab for each course where you go quite in depth. Like you're learning a lot in that week, so the labs are a bit long, but in the sense you're really tackling everything, whereas every two weeks or so we have a quiz on what we've covered, but that's more low-level, conceptual, making sure you actually understand and not just the nitty-gritty little details. So it's a nice balance in that sense because you're getting kind of a well-rounded sense of what's going on. Yeah, definitely agree. I think, I think that approach is really good because, you know, you spend a lot of time working on a solution, which is, you know, really testing all your capabilities, and it might take you, like, 10 hours to or longer <laughs> to do that lab, right? <laughs> um, but then, uh, but then you do have these quizzes where you're, you need to know just like little specifics about things, right? Um, but you don't get too in depth in that. Well, and it's nice it's too with the labs because if you're doing something a certain way your own way, when you talk with someone else, they might implement it a different way, and then the actual solution is a different way. And mm -hmm. having spent so much time trying to figure it out on your own, you're definitely going to learn from that yeah. and get a very like once again well-rounded experience out of it. Great, thank you. Okay, um, so this will uh, go back to Ollie and Chris. 
What does a day in your job look like? <laughs> oh, it's different every day. <laughs> uh, I guess that's a, yeah, that's, a, that's the thing I love about it. Um, most recently, it's been uh, building models. So there's, there's a lot of engineering work that's had to be uh, done around that. So uh, there was a time when I was doing a lot of work on the company database um, and recently been doing a lot of uh, engineering work in Python to set up our infrastructure around the models. But now that we've got to the place where we can kind of just go wild with the research, um, it's uh, reading research papers for the specific problem we're trying to solve, which is either sentence classification or entity tagging. Um, seeing which models apply most to our problem and then trying to implement them at work, which is, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Cool. Chris, how about yourself? Yeah, so I'm at a consulting company. Um, and like I said, I'm, I just, I'm just working on this, uh, this first project that I've got. Um, so it's probably going to look much different once I'm off this project next week and on something new. Um, but uh, we're working on a proof of concept um, in partnership with Microsoft, uh, their, tech, their pre-sales team. So um, my job right now is, is building models, investigating the data, communicating with our, the client, uh, making sure that I'm on the right path with this. Um, I've got quite a few calls between me and we've got somebody else in the company who's been helping on the visualization side. Um, I meet with Microsoft probably once a week. Um, I just got back from Calgary yesterday where I gave a presentation on, on you know, our almost final solution. Um, so it's pretty varied, but lots of it is kind of sitting, trying to figure out what models to use and how to, how to make the models better and getting them to run. But it's, it's been good, diverse. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so along that theme, how many, uh, I don't know if you have to get as specific as hours, but maybe what proportion of your day are you sitting in a chair, banging away, working on code on the computer? In the course or at work? At work. Uh, all of it. All of it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, pretty close to all of it, I guess. Um, except for when I've got meetings. Mm -hmm. I leave sometimes for meetings, but. Okay. Um, yeah, or I've got a giant whiteboard that I use sometimes mm -hmm. to like problem solve stuff. So um, I try to walk around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. I'm just looking at through some more questions. Uh, maybe we can talk about, we can split it into two. We can, maybe you two can give a summary a little bit more about uh, the diversity of your cohort, and then maybe you can report on the diversity of your cohort. Okay. Um, yeah, ours was fairly, or quite diverse, actually. So I think we had about a third of the students that were just coming out of university into like their first master's program. We had another third that were, that had some experience, uh, working experience. And then another third of us were like over 30 and like changing careers kind of. Um, and, then, and then we had a diversity of backgrounds as well. Like I was the only professional musician <laughs> changing careers. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, but uh, Ollie's an engineer. There were some other engineers. Other pharmacists. People, pharmacists. Um, um, other people coming from like biology background, mm -hmm. science background. Um, one liberal art, or one arts student. Um, yeah, and not everyone had a technical mathematical background in our cohort, mm -hmm. um, which was nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it really varied. Great. And then how about your cohort? Yeah, ours is very diverse. We have probably about a quarter. So we're, our cohort is about twice as big as theirs was, mm -hmm. and so we have about a quarter of them are just came out of university from last year. There's probably half of us have been out for a few years working in various fields. We have a lot of people with engineering backgrounds, math backgrounds, but there's also a lot of us like me, bio. And I mean, half of us, maybe not even half of us were born in Canada too. Like we have people from everywhere. I think it's 10 different countries that we cover. Oh wow. Which is, yeah, really cool. And various, we have a few people who have worked in data science before, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Like it's, the majority is switching careers or gaining new skills to take back to their careers. Great. Yeah, it's really interesting. Great, thank you. Um, okay. 
Uh, maybe you could, one of you could comment on what percentage of the program is um, stats versus programming? Or is there a clear distinction? Like 50 <laughs> 50? Yeah. Like it's such an overlap. Yeah. I mean, it's all programming, I guess. Yeah. What Do we mean like stats versus machine learning or like. Yeah. Stats, is, the question is what percentage of the course is stats versus programming? But if it's not a clear distinction, I think it's fair to comment on that too. Yeah. We get started pretty quickly with R and Python, yeah. and then pretty much everything you do is in R and Python, yeah. right? <laughs> so your stats work is going to be programming, too. Yeah. And then machine learning is the other part of it. And you're doing lots of stats in every block, though. Yeah. So that's overlapping, and your stats are commenting on your machine learning and hmm. justifying. Yeah. It's all very intertwined. Yes. I don't know if you can really say it's a clear boundary. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, this, again, would bounce back to the alumni. Have any of your classmates covered their own comp uh, sorry, have any of your classmates started their own company? Are there any anyone who's done that? <coughs> I don't I don't think so. No. Okay. Not that I know of. Um, Some of you are working in startups, but they haven't but mm -hmm. none of the, the startups have been driven by <coughs> the graduates yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not not that I know of. No. Yeah. I think it'd be possible though. Like I think yeah, when, when, when we first graduated, I don't, I, I don't think I realized what I knew versus mm. what was what other people knew out in industry, right? Okay. So I think maybe I underestimated um, the skill set that I had gained until I got a job, and I'm like, oh no, that's yeah. you know. That's <laughs> also a personality thing too. Like, there's a couple in our cohort who I'm yeah. sure in the next five years are going to be running their own startup. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm. So. Yeah, it's funny you say it. I felt exactly the same came out of the course and you're, you're intimidated by what you think you don't know and then mm -hmm. you, you walk through the door somewhere and you suddenly realize that you're in a really good place. Yeah. That's great to hear. New questions rolling in. Um, does not having a technical background affect your success in the program? Any examples from yourself or your uh, data science friends? I don't have a technical background and I'm learning a lot. Like it's definitely a steep learning curve. But if you're willing to put in the time to understand it, and I mean, I, I don't think I've struggled in that sense. Mm -hmm. And like I said, learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, there are so many different parts of data science that you can choose to specialize in or kind of take a step back and be on a more broad level. Um, if you want to specialize in certain parts, I think understanding statistics and mathematics um, really well is is important but I don't think it's actually a requirement for the course and I think some people made that decision like there's a guy running a, a team for uh, a consulting company that consults with Microsoft now who was in the course with us last year and he kind of made the decision to step back from the sort of like very technical machine learning side and mm -hmm. that's that suited him perfectly like he understands all these things exist and he manages a team really well so it's kind of it's up to the student. Great. Thank and this you. program also seems very much suited for people who don't have the trunk, strong technical background. Mm -hmm. So there's that bonus too. Great. Thank you. More questions rolling in. Would you recommend that students coming into the program um, prepare by learning a bit of Python and R before they get here? It would make your life easier yeah. in that sense. I think it's worth it. Although I didn't have any R, I had a little bit of Python mm -hmm. coming into it, and now I feel much more comfortable in R than Python. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. there's a big switch. But um, yeah, that's helpful. But the also, you have. yeah, sorry to not to interrupt, but mm -hmm. also in the first block, you're just getting used to the pace. So if you already have a few of those key skills already in there, you can kind of take more time to figure out how you're going to balance everything, mm -hmm. because you do really hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. like that's not a joke. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, Jordan, you can comment on um, what were the courses you took in the first block, um, and what, what did you learn, you know, R versus Python, and then how does R and Python get incorporated in the programs afterwards? OK, so in the first block, we covered R and Python in, we had just a basics in programming. And that definitely, we expanded on that actually more throughout the next few blocks, and learned more key skills, like really got into tidyverse and R, and various packages in, uh, or libraries, sorry, in uh, Python. We also started off um, really with like Git, 
and GitHub, mm -hmm. and they really walked us, well, not, yeah, walked us through, which was really nice because it can be totally intimidating, GitHub, if you aren't experienced in it. So the first block was more or less getting you set up, and it was doing also the key statistics, like the foundations. We went from what does it mean to multivariate derivatives in four weeks, which sounds wild, and it is, but <laughs> you learn a lot, and it's really a good starting point for the rest of the school year. And every block really does build on each other, too, which is a key thing to highlight. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I just am totally biased. I really enjoyed it. So Great. And then um, maybe, again, back to you, Jordan. Can you comment on... Um, blocks afterwards. Um, are you taking Python and R every, courses in Python and R every block? Which courses tend to have which? Depends. So with supervised learning, we definitely did Python just because we have there's more libraries suited for it. Whereas a lot of the I found the data wrangling we were taught in R, and we've gone back and forth. Like right now in unsupervised learning, we've jumped back between R and Python depending on what the application was and what we were. So everything was a bit more tailored in that respect. But it's been almost an equal divide. And I mean, coming in, I was much more comfortable in Python than I was in R, and now they're probably about equal. But stats is mostly done in R. Um, like I said, it's really dependent on what you're actually doing, mm -hmm. on what language you're going to use. But yeah. it's a good balance. Great. And then maybe you two can comment about in your jobs. Do, have you um, used both languages, or did you find that uh, your job primarily has been requiring one of them, and then maybe comment on the diversity uh, when you met up with uh, your cohort, the other 10 last week. Um, is everyone working in Python, or is there some diversity? So our, our product is built in Python. Okay. Uh, Python and Node, so yep. the engineers, their end is in Node. Um, so almost no R at Finn. Um, okay. But uh, we do actually use it for uh, some reporting stuff. Mm -hmm. So when, when we train our models, we have an R script we run that generates a report to, to help us understand how good they are. Because for exploring data and visualizing, I think it's, it's hard to beat the, the speed at which you can explore data with R. Is, for me, it's much faster than Python. So um, yeah, but 95% Python at Finn. Mm -hmm. uh, at my company, it's pretty mixed. Um, mm -hmm. So this project that I was on, I was the only data scientist. So I got to basically choose what I wanted. and so. Okay. I did R just because we did R in my capstone mostly, and <coughs> I was working on a, a project with one of the teaching fellows a, um, um, for, a, for a paper that we're submitting to a journal soon, and uh, we just decided to do that all in R, so that's just my go-to language at the moment. Um, but I know other data scientists in the company are using Python, and I need to use Python on my next project. It's, it's pretty mixed. All right. Thank you. Um, are there any other skills? So this is going back to the original question was, um, should they learn R and Python before mm. they enter the program? Uh, all of you resoundingly said, yeah, it wouldn't hurt and it would help. Um, additional question, is there any other skills uh, that you would recommend people tune up on before they, they arrive? Linear algebra. Linear algebra. <laughs> time management. Yeah. Time management. <laughs> <laughs> time management and linear algebra. Yeah. All right. OK. This is an interesting question. Um, we are a data science program, not a big data program. But will the program cover uh, big data tools um, like Apache and Spark? If so, yes. If not, um, comment. No, not really. OK. Um, so we're you didn't cover we, Apache and Spark, but did you? We did. So we worked a little bit with AWS. Yeah. We learned the um, foundations of MapReduce oh. that are going to be helpful. Um, there was a lab, a MapReduce lab, wasn't there? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a brutal lab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I feel like we dipped our toes into it a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, I feel like now that I'm working, though, that's something, like I was just on Coursera looking at maybe uh, strengthening some of those skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did get into neural nets and things like that. It's so a little bit of deep learning, but not some of those tools. Um, but I feel like that's something I can pick up now. Mm -hmm. And having the foundation from here, I think, would also help with learning that stuff. Because I know I've done, tried to learn a bit of Hadoop and deal with MapReduce and whatnot in the past. And I've looked at it actually within the last month, too. And just having the background so far that we've learned has helped with the understand, just the basic understanding of what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an added bonus. Great. You're definitely capable by the end, Yeah. even though I haven't reached the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think like the, the general attitude that, that you get from the course is like you're not intimidated by picking things up after this yes. course. Like you pick so much up yourself that yeah. you know you walk into a company and they say we need to use Spark or PySpark. Cool. Like you just start learning. Great. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit more again about your different backgrounds. Um, based on your different backgrounds, was there anything that led you to data science? Um, or was it a bit of serendipity? Um, like I said, I, I, <coughs> uh, when I graduated like out of high school, which is quite a few years ago, um, my strengths were always math and music. And uh, in my first year, I was trying to juggle, juggle both of those, and I was taking calculus and statistics and computer science and things like that in my first year of university. Uh, but then I ended up going down the music path. Um, and then, yeah, I decided, you know what, I, I think I want to change careers and, and get back to this. And so I wasn't looking at data science, but looking at all those fields, mm -hmm. which just happened to be the fields <laughs> that are necessary then for data science. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess what drew me to data science is just there's, there's so many different applications for it. Um, like there is the possibility to um, you know, use music and data science eventually. I mean, I haven't done much of that yet, but, um, but I know that that exists. Um, and then, and so I just like the fact that it's so open-ended and uh, there's constantly things to learn. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah, I was, my, my decision was a bit gung-ho. I didn't really know what I was coming into. I just knew it would be hard. Um, I was working as an engineer uh, before that. Um, the mechanical engineering scene in Vancouver is not the same as in the UK. Okay. So for me, I was kind of like, all right, time, time to make a move into uh, software because I like the idea of something that's not really, there's just so much freedom there. Um, and I looked at some courses like Lighthouse Labs and things like that initially, but my initial thought was like, all right, my strength is maths and you don't need to be good at maths uh, to write code at a really high level um, but I would argue to an extent certainly in, in certain areas of data science you do so um, that was kind of the, the answer to why data science for me is like yeah. software but applied mathematics as well great yeah. see mine's more roundabout like like coming out of high school my strength was definitely math but I came into university thinking oh I'll do chemistry and then by the end of first year, biology was a science I hated the least. <laughs> so I went to that. And then it was just kind of like trying to figure out what I wanted to do with that because it was never my first choice. Yeah. And then we got into third year biostats, and that was fun. And I'm like, well, okay, maybe this was just a fluke. And then my last year, I finally took, like literally my last term, I finally took a programming course. And I was like, this is fun. <laughs> so then you got into the more massive open online courses, and just everything I gravitated towards, too, was data science. Mm. And then this program came up, and I was like, hey. <laughs> I'll apply. So that's great. Yeah. Um, in your application to this program, did you apply to other programs or did you consider applying to other programs and what were they? I also applied to the Bachelor of Computer Science one here. Okay. But that was all I applied for. <laughs> uh, nope. Nope. Uh, I was <coughs> taking courses at SFU looking mm -hmm. at their actual science program. So okay. um, that was my plan until I heard about this program and okay. I applied and got in. So if I hadn't got in, I'd probably. I would still be right now doing actuarial science courses, <laughs> probably, <laughs> right, as opposed to having a job. So. <laughs> Great. Um, all right, so the next thing uh, that I think we could talk about, uh, more of the student experience, I want to bring back to that, that theme. And let's talk a little bit more about uh, your experience in depth with the instructional fa the instructional staff, so we touched on that a little bit, but maybe one of you could comment on um, the continuity of the teaching fellows that go from block to block, and how you interact with them. And someone else could comment uh, a little bit more on uh, the instructors, um, how you uh, in the lecture, and how you interact with them, and and where they come from in the program. Okay, so we have our teaching fellows that they're kind of the bridge between the lab and the instructing team. And they're great because they come, like, we have Vincenzo and GVDR. They come straight from block one and follow you all the way through. So they know exactly what you've been through. They've been with you as you've struggled with some of these things and, you know, you're asking questions and whatnot. But then the actual instructing team is some of you guys. But then also, like, our stats instructor right now, he's an expert on missing, de missing values and whatnot. So that's awesome to learn about, too, from him. And he's accessible by email, office hours, whatever. And... So that you have that nice bridge where you bring in these people who, you know, might, I don't want to say 
they're more experts in certain specific fields. Mm -hmm. Whereas we have the TAs also who come with us throughout the different courses too, who kind of can bring it all together with us. So it's kind of, I don't know if this is making sense, but like it's that you're getting kind of multiple depths with it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, um, just touching on that as well. So we, there's 24 one credit courses, and yeah. so you get a lot of different instructors that are all basically teaching their specialty, right? And so yeah. you're learning um, little bits of information from different people. And then if you cover the same thing by, but slightly differently with two different teachers, I mean, I think that's really helpful. So I, I like the setup of the courses um, and the diversity of the instructors, for sure. Yeah. You can definitely see the threads between the different <coughs> modules and you kind of link things up as you learn, which is nice. Great. Um, so another aspect of the student experience, we've been very focused on the, like, the technical nitty gritty parts of data <laughs> science, but this is a professional master's program. So maybe you can comment on some of the other support that the program gives you uh, to prepare you for um, the job, for the job search. Um, so maybe someone could comment on, start commenting on that and we can talk about that for a little bit. We actually have a career fair today. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like right after this, but yesterday like we've ha or we've had um, employer sessions where they come in and they describe their data science team and what they do and whatnot, which has been really interesting. But we also, which to me this is a huge highlight for the program. But we had a networking workshop. We are doing a resume workshop, a LinkedIn workshop. A big one for me is that we're doing an interview prep workshop, which is huge because I mean I was a preschool teacher. Like I can interview with three year olds, but I don't know how to do it with adults. <laughs> so that to me is huge. Yeah, those kind of built-in experiences, and they're also tailored to data science. You're not just going to a generic cover letter workshop where it's mm -hmm. insert this, insert that. It's more tailored, mm -hmm. and that I think is going to be hugely helpful in the job search. Yeah. For sure, and the capstone project as well mm -hmm. is really helpful that way. So not only are you getting into industry and seeing those kind of data sets and those kind of problems, but you're actually making contacts with people in industry. And some of us were offered jobs from those companies. Mm -hmm. um, I've kept in touch with uh, my supervisor. At Rio Tinto, and um, so that's that's good. That's been really great. Yeah, and also the the help with the resume was great, mm -hmm. and it was very personal. Like I got to sort of sit down face to face with Milad and and hash out you know what was in my resume and what should be there, what shouldn't, and what I should be thinking about when I'm writing it. So it was it was very personal, which I liked. Great. Um, and then let's go a level up. So do you, how. Uh, how did you interact with the departments that support the program? So the, por the program is shared between statistics and computer science. Do you have interaction with those departments at all, or are you pretty um, focused on MDS? Will you complete the program? It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty focused. Yeah. 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 Like, our teaching fellows are doing their PhDs in, or have completed their PhDs in the computer science or statistics pro uh, departments. But they're all pretty focused on MDS. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your lounge is in computer science, so you're physically yeah. in that building yeah. sometimes. Yes. <laughs> but oh, but mostly you're very focused on the program. I'd actually say that's the strength of the program, is yeah. the fact that you don't feel like you're just you know part of two different mm -hmm. yeah. uh, departments. They actually went out of their way to make sure that this is its own thing mm -hmm. um, with our own courses and um, you know best parts of those worlds. but. I don't know, I, I didn't personally have much contact with either department. Yeah. But a lot of support here within MDS. Yeah, great. a lot. Yeah, yeah. and the people who, who teach the, the courses are great. There's some, there's some real experts teaching the program as well. You know, it's quite exciting, you know, in your, you know, in our advanced machine learning course, you know, that the guy teaching that is sort of a renowned expert in optimization and things like that. So there's, there's some real talent to look up to while you're, while you're studying. Great. Yeah. Um, again, keeping on the student experience, uh, let's talk about um, the soft skill development. Um, so how much emphasis in the program is there on soft skills development? And we'll call soft skills anything that's not, um, you know, statistics or programming. Uh, so we can talk about uh, workflows or writing, communication, as well as resume building. And then how useful have those things been in your work experience? Yeah, so we did have courses on communication. Um, which I think has been helpful. I mean, I've had to present to multiple types of groups. So, you know, to the higher ups who don't want to hear the intricacies of the model and how do you shape that talk versus next week we're doing a technical handoff. Um, and, uh, and I feel like I've gotten a lot more experienced. I was actually just thinking about that yesterday. <clears throat> Being able to go into a 20 minute presentation and 
you know, I basically mostly prepared on like the plane over like what I was <laughs> going to do as opposed to like being nervous for the three minute presentation I had to do in communications <laughs> class for the first time. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other. Well, so we had communications. And yeah, and our communications course was actually taught by someone that was in your cohort. That's right. And yeah. he's an English teacher from the in, in the past. Yeah. And that was a really good course at the time. Um, we didn't realize just how important it was going to be, but as you mm -hmm. progressively go through more of the blocks, it really it's highlighted. And also workflows too. You were our workflows instructor, and that's not the kind of course you find online. Like it's not. It's one of those things that you really need to practice and. It was all laid out, and it's still we're still applying it to uh, blocks that we're doing that we're in right now. So. Yeah, and we had courses on like confidentiality and right, security. Yeah. Um, those are coming up for us. Yeah, yeah, and those were those were really helpful, right? It kind of gives you the bigger picture of mm -hmm. what it's going to look like as an actual data scientist mm -hmm. in the real world, and yeah. Yeah, and anonymizing data and. Also courses on communicating, uh, how to communicate statistically statistics with people, yeah. uh, which is something I had zero experience in before the course. Yeah. Great. Um, can you comment on maybe your wider experience at UBC? So how did you enjoy being at UBC? Um, and maybe you could also comment about living in Vancouver too at the same time. Um. I, well, I like UBC, um, but I was also finishing my doctorate in piano. Uh, so I've been at UBC for way too many years. <laughs> it's like my eighth year at UBC. <laughs> so uh, as beautiful as it is, uh, I was happy to kind of get off campus and graduate. Um, but no, it, it's a, UBC is a beautiful campus. It's probably one of the best in Canada, uh, if not the best in Canada. Um, great city to be in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think um, with it being a professional master's and being a lot more intense than your average degree, uh, for me at least, I wasn't in the kind of student community at UBC. You know, I felt sort of like this separate thing where we're just hammering through this content and I have my social life outside of work, uh, outside of studying. Um, yeah, but that's that's kind of how it how it felt for me. Mm -hmm. See, because I did my undergrad at UBC, so I have a bit more of a different background in it. So, mm -hmm. like, Day of the Longboat, which is a huge thing at UBC, we dragged out two teams to do that. We had a, a soccer team. I didn't play on it, but that everyone did take part where possible. Mm -hmm. So there's been a balance in that. I know we have a girl who's in the dance group. Oh, okay. So there's totally options out there to get yourself more involved. And I know, like, I live downtown. I live right by Stanley Park and living off campus because I spent my whole undergrad living on campus. Like you said, you got to get off. It's been <laughs> huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do, do many of the cohort live on campus that uh, are in either of your cohorts? Majority live off, I would say. Okay. But there definitely are a few, and there's different options. Like, I know there's Green College where they actually have dinner and breakfast made for them, which is super convenient when you're trying to get all your stuff done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But yeah, and if you, if you manage your time, you, you might have some left to enjoy Vancouver, which is, <laughs> I, I, I love it here. Yeah. You like skiing and riding bikes. And, and the rain. <laughs> yeah, well, snowing in the mountains, though. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on your elevation, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> um, another question coming from online. How do you feel career opportunities have grown? Are there more integrated jobs in data science um, with research and science, or are they mostly um, jobs that are in industry and companies? So maybe you can think about who your Jobs that you saw when you were looking for, yeah, looking for work or what your colleagues are doing now. So are most people working in industry on like a web company or some finance company or are there people doing things um, in uh, government, not-for-profit, academic research groups? Or did you see jobs out there like that? I think every company knows they need a data scientist, yeah. but not necessarily what for. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of job offers out there with uh, you know, big clothing companies and things like that, where you're, I would imagine your work would be mainly focused on uh, sort of increasing sales on a, on a website, for example. Um, yeah, so you, you see a lot of companies like that. Um, you also see quite a few small companies that do a, a really wide variety of things. Uh, company, uh, companies like Semios, who are, I think they're doing a capstone this I guess year. I think right? so, yeah. Yeah, and they, they do like uh, machine learning for. Um, manipulating pests so that they can uh, 
kind of help help orchards out with problems with moths and things like that. So like that's like a really interesting problem where you're using data science to actually solve a thing rather than sell more of something to someone. Um, so that was the kind of thing that I was looking for. And um, yeah, th there's a bunch of companies like that, and then you've obviously got like the Microsoft and the Amazon and Google coming and things like that. So they're going to have sort of very high-end research being done there, I would guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so um, this year in a lot of the blocks, uh, most of the blocks, you're having a course um, that has a project. Yes. Um, so you have three courses that are your typical lab and lecture structure, and now we're having a more open-ended um, project course. What, uh, what type of pro projects have you seen people doing? Uh, maybe if you can comment on, or what have you done for yeah. some of these projects? Well, we had, with the workflows class, we had uh, just a project that was basically understanding the workflow, but it was cool too because a lot of people did different things with that. Like some people went quite in depth, like I know one guy, he did a whole full mental health analysis and it was meant to be just a workflow thing and he's expanded that into this block when we're doing a mini uh, feature selection project and he's taking that and he's running with it too. So you get more in depth depending on how you want to work with stuff and yeah, no, it's the projects are awesome too for our portfolios. I'm excited about that. Yeah, so all the projects are you guys are putting on. So we, maybe we can talk a little bit about GitHub. Yes. Um, so when you're working, maybe you can comment about um, how you interact with GitHub. Maybe I'll, I'll leave this to you, Jordan, this year. So okay. there's two GitHubs that you interact. Maybe you can tell the audience about that. Okay, so yeah, so we have the two GitHubs. We have our public one that everyone can see, and we have the UBC Enterprise one. So that's where we find all of our lectures and our lab material and where we submit all of our stuff and submit all our quizzes. And that one is completely private. But we link a lot to our public GitHubs if we're doing a project, because that's where you want your portfolio to sit. And it's, we do Git for everything. Like, you're pushing to Git every day, because that's where you're storing all of your assignments, even if they're only partially done. Mm -hmm. So at least if your computer crashes, which I've seen happen <laughs> this year, <laughs> people can recover their files and not lose all the work they've done. <laughs> that was a lesson learned. Not for me, one of my friends. But <laughs> Great. And maybe you can comment maybe on... Um, the projects that you're doing in your Viz class? Oh yeah, we're doing a Shiny app, which it's just kind of an interface for, it's nice, actually I'm doing a wine data set that they provided with it for us, but you're able to allow the user to select different variables that they want to visualize and you can manipulate how they see and what they see and the output, whether it's a figure, a table. I know some guy, one guy, sorry, who is doing um, a 3D I don't even know how to describe it. He's basically doing stocks mm. and analyzing them through that, but it's meant for the user to analyze. It's actually really interesting in that respect because there's a lot of different things you can do with it. So yeah, these are very diverse because everyone gets very. to choose their own data sets to work. Very. So it can go from very simple to from a scatter plot to the 3D rotational stock model. Yeah. Great. More questions rolling in here. Um, do students and alumni share, I'm guessing this is the coursework on GitHub that the question is about? Um, probably. So do students and alumni share the work that they did on the course on github.com? Uh, do we share the coursework? I mean, after like, the labs are complete, they're open. Mm -hmm. So that that's you, in the that, in the in our that? internal in site. the internal exactly. Yeah. So if you wanted to compare notes and you know see what your classmates were doing, yeah. Um, I never did that a lot, but mm -hmm. I know some other people were sort of interested in how other people have implemented things, mm -hmm. yep. um, and so that's available. Mm -hmm. But not from like cohort to cohort. No, no. Like so we, yeah. that's right. We have access to some of your lab, or mm. sorry, your lecture notes from last year, Okay. but we don't have access to your work. I don't know if that's what the question right. was asking. Uh, yeah, I think so, but um, uh, the viewers want to see, so the viewers are interested in seeing some of the labs and such. Oh, okay. Um, um, maybe we can mm. post this to Facebook. We do have, uh, not the work, but we do have some of the instructions um, for a typical lab public on our website. So we can put a link to that on github.com. And um, one thing also that perhaps we could do uh, as a program is that we could take some of the, um, ask some of the students if they'd be willing to share some of the work that they already have on github.com for their projects and share that. Um, so that's perhaps something that we could do. Okay, how are we doing for time here? Okay, we still have some more time. This is great. 
Uh, recommendations for how you balance studying and life in the program. We've already talked about how this is an, an, uh, an intensive pro program, but let's maybe talk about some uh, some little uh, some like actual practicalities. Did you have a coffee every morning? Did you do some sun salutations, for example? What did you do? How did you? What did you do personally to balance? I steeled myself to the idea that it was just going to be tough for ten okay. months. Personally, um, I knew I was changing careers. It was going to be hard. Um, I I've got two kids, and I. I still needed to work a little bit, and so my, my year was just nuts. Okay. And, and finishing your postdoc. And I was finishing my, my doctorate Sorry. at the same time. So <laughs> I, I knew it was just it was like beyond crazy. Uh, and so I just accepted that, and that was fine. <laughs> yeah, I think all I had on my plate was the course. I didn't have any children to look after, <laughs> which I great, was grateful for. But for me, I just set rules. Like, I would turn up at... I'd be on campus by 7.30, working for an hour and a half before I went into lectures. And then um, I found if I did that, then by 10 p.m. that night, I could have the lab done. Um, so I could have all of Monday's work done by the end of Monday. And I found by that, I could get to Friday afternoon and have nothing to do, which I think I was one of the only people who, who worked like that. And it took a lot of like setting rules for myself. but. I got to ski every weekend, and I, I had, a, had a weekend during the course, which I needed. I think I would have dropped out otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was impressive that you managed to do that. Well, I don't, less I don't think less I to manage. Off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Period. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Like, yeah. all of our, I think it changed from last year. All of our assignments are due Sunday at 3. I don't know if that's going to be the same for next mm. year. But so Monday and Tuesday night, if I make plans with friends, it's only Monday or Tuesday. Right. Because by Friday, Saturday, like most of my, like 70% of the lab work can be done by Thursday night, Friday morning. But then I spend time tweaking and like trying to further my understanding, which is really me playing around mm -hmm. up until su the Sunday crunch time. Mm -hmm. But that's just more of a personal uh, thing like that. But I'm also like you on campus by eight yeah. working. Mm -hmm. But I like it that yeah. way. And if you can find a quiet space and kind of make sure there's no way to be interrupted, you can get a great deal done in less time as well, I found. Totally. Yeah. So maybe we could put some numbers on for the folks. They're asking, how much time did you spend on coursework per course? So we can talk about, maybe we can break it down a little <coughs> bit. So we have in one block, which is about a month long, you basically have four weeks of work. So there's four labs and yeah. um, two, roughly two quizzes per, per course. So how many hours, let's say, how many hours prepping for a lab, or, or completing a lab, and how many hours prepping for a quiz? And then they can do the math, scaling upwards. I definitely spent la I spend less time studying for a quiz than a lab, for sure. Mm. Oh, yeah. I think we all did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm also a very slow worker, so I don't know. I can throw out my numbers, but it's going to be relative. Yeah. Probably a lab could be anywhere from 5 to 12 hours, depending on how intense it is. I would say the same, and I would say I, I, I made sure I always went to classes. I, yep. I never skipped classes because then <laughs> it goes too fast. <laughs> I don't I don't know how how you could manage if you decided not to come to class. Um, and then I felt the classes. If I just reviewed the material and did the labs, I was often prepared for the quizzes without having to do a yeah. whole lot more. And it's helpful too yeah. to read the lecture material before you do the lab, because mm. I find there's a lot of explanations that otherwise you'd be sitting there banging your head over? I found actually the opposite. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I would start the lab before, so the morning before the lecture that was for the lab. So I'd spend an hour and a half working on this lab that I didn't have all the knowledge to do. And I found myself sort of not understanding things and asking questions that then would get answered in the lecture and be really valuable and kind of stick much more. So it would kind of be an hour and a half on the lab then come out of lectures at, what time would we finish? Like 4 o'clock or something? Uh, yeah, like labs, you're, you're labs finish at 4. Yeah, and you've spent two hours on the lab by yep. then, so that's three and a half hours. And then go home and have it done by 10 p.m., so probably about eight or nine hours per lab, something like that. Yeah, so it's like you're all in the same right. ball, yeah. five to 12 hour ballpark. Yep. Yeah. But then I know some people who manage to get all their work done by Friday morning, like you, and go skiing for the weekend, or it's totally up to how you want to structure your time which I guess doesn't really help. <laughs> <laughs> and do the students work together at all? Are there study groups? Oh, yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's 
probably the main reason that I've enjoyed the program so much when it comes to the work. Because we sit there and we go over the concepts. Like we don't really talk about how you would code something, but just the overall understanding of the concept before jumping into it, and everyone is much more prepared. Yeah, great. And it's kind of like a 42-person study group in some respects. Because <laughs> everyone kind of chats with each other, and before you know it, you've ended up 15 people ahead back at the same conversation you just had mm. with the person next to you. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you can comment on, uh, any of you could comment on the use of Slack in the program and how that affects the study groups and completing the labs. And Yeah, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. We're all connected. And, uh, you know, if you, if you run into problems, you can just, you know, post a question. And yeah, because every <laughs> class has a channel. Yeah, and if we're all working, like, 10 hours on the labs, you know, <laughs> just like, no matter what you've got a question, somebody's <laughs> online. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so... And if you're too nervous to post, there's always someone who's going to post <laughs> the same <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Um, next question who's, that has just come in is, how strongly would you recommend data science to someone who wants to remain close to the business world? I kind of just recommend it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> currently trying to get my sister to make the move as well. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm in the business world for the first time right now. Is what it feels like. Well, it's true, and uh, and I'm really enjoying the data science in the business world. Great. I'm liking it a lot. Okay. Um, so maybe what I'll do for the last couple minutes before we wrap up is just ask each of you to um, offer any final thoughts, reflections on the program, as well as any kind of like advice um, to somebody considering um, applying for the program. Maybe we'll start from this end, Jordan, and okay. the other way. I would honestly say do it. Go in totally open-minded. Uh, it's not about the grades in this program. If you do the work and you understand what you're doing, you're going to do fine grade-wise, but spend time understanding. That's the important, that's the whole point of being here. You're here for the foundations, and you're here to learn from your peers and from your instructors. Everyone has different knowledge. Be totally open to it. Even people who think they really know a concept going in, someone might ask a question because they think in a different way, and then it totally s turns it on their head for the other person. So just be open. Great. Yeah, I mean, I'm not being paid to say this, but it's the best academic decision I ever made by a mile. Like I, I was working as an engineer before, and I actually worked for a, a Formula One race team, which is kind of like the pinnacle of like how interesting can engineering get, you know, the, the time to produce things and do R&D is just like so fast, very fast moving company full of smart people but you know once I was done with work I wouldn't, I wouldn't do any engineering on the weekend you know whereas now I'm in a place where I'm enjoying my job so much that I'm blogging about it and spending time doing it outside of work which is arguably not a good thing. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, I still, still get time to go skiing but yeah I'm just in a place where I'm just absolutely loving what I'm doing work wise right now. So. Yeah, I would strongly recommend the program. Great. And Chris? Yeah, I, I still am surprised sometimes. I come back from work and I'm like, I can't believe that I've got the skills that I've got at this point when, you know, a year and a half ago. Like, I didn't have any <laughs> of this, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's still sometimes a bit of a shock um, at how prepared I am for the work that I'm doing and how much I enjoy doing the work that I'm doing. Um, and it's... It, like, I mean, it, it was this program, right, that prepared me for that. Um, and it was intense, it was tough, uh, but totally worth it. Yeah. And just to add on to that, too, saying it's intense and it's tough, I still look forward <coughs> to Mondays. Mm. Like, I don't wake mm -hmm. up and go, oh, it's Monday, I don't want to do this. Like, right. you're like, oh, what are we going to cover this week? And the slides are up, and yeah. yeah. It's tough, but really interesting. Really interesting, yeah. yeah. Great. That's a key point. Well, I want to thank you all very much for your time. This has been a really wonderful discussion. Um, as an instructor, it's always very interesting to hear about the uh, experience from the, from the other side of the looking glass. And I hope that everyone here in the audience has got uh, the questions that they had answered. Um, so again, this webinar was focused about the student experience. And we're going to have a follow-up webinar on February 27th. More information will come on the Facebook page uh, and will be announced. But that's going to be focused um, at the more technical aspects of applying to the program. Um, so we can talk about prerequisites and other things like that. And that's all we have for you today from Vancouver and UBC about the Master of Data Science program. Thank you very much.